Taurus. And this month is giving you a totally different flavor than last month. So in May, you were really busy at catching up with yourself uh, because in uh, April, you were kind of hibernating a little bit, going back over the old things, weeding out, doing that inner internal cleansing that we all have to do from one time to another. And uh, that healing process kind of like ended and then here into to May, you started revamping yourself, feeling good about yourself. You might have got a new hairdo, might have been out there shopping for some new clothes and starting to radiate, to flower again. And, and so now that you're in this rebirth cycle here on the May side of this reading, well, June is going to be uh, giving you, a, like I said, a different flavor because now it's all about, okay, I, I've revamped myself. Uh, reinvented myself from this whole last year. Now, where do I want to go with this? Where is my self-worth this year uh, as opposed to last year? Um, how can I bring in more income? How can I uh, make my um, checks and balances? We're not just talking here financial, but the checks and balances in life as to who you are, how can that radiate? How can you bring that out? Um, I see you looking around, digging a little deeper for those talents that you have with you that you perhaps may not yet have started to bring out into life yet, but you know they're in there somewhere. Some of you are going to be digging deep, but taking some action on testing it out. Maybe, just maybe, some of them will pan out where you can come to have a second income from some of these talents. So don't get surprised. The best time for, for thinking new here this month will be around the new moon on the 8th. Um, and I would make a point of it, if I were you, uh, to really take a little time off, even just, you know, a five, 10 minute meditation and think about how do you want your finances to look for the rest of this year, way into 2014. So you can already, if you do a little meditation, a little cleansing, a little focusing, not just for how it's going to be this whole year, but you may very well be the lucky ones to see results of it already before the end of the month. This tells me you're taking action on some of these things, these talents. They're just laying there. They're like, they're on the shelf. It's time to take them down, bring them out. And uh, Jupiter is there, and I would say, you know what? It's going to be 12 years before this next cycle of Jupiter is going to be in your financial house. And she's just about to conclude her journey. By the 25th, I believe it is, she is going to be moving in to Cancer. And you won't see her again for a long, long time. So you have the best potential right now to kick into action. I see that you've been thinking about several things here over these last few months from February onwards. It's kind of like been cocooning there for a while, but don't drag your feet. It's time to get it out, launch it, have Jupiter help you, send you off with flying wings. you got Mars there for your drive, action, desires, you know, and that's revving up your engines, uh, Taurus. And I know that you like to take time with whatever you do. You know, you're not normally the one that, that runs and races off like the Aryans will do. You're in the ball. You know, you want to take your time, chew your grass. But uh, then again, it, it's like Mars is there with you. Uh, so that's giving you that extra oomph. And uh, also it's in the sign of uh, Gemini. So you can really communicate really, really well to get things launched. Enough said about that. Now, on the third, um, we also have uh, Mercury in good talks with both Neptune and Saturn. So that's things pertaining to your dreams, um, your visions that you've been having, communicating them now, and really bringing it up to either your supervisors or you being your own supervisor, because it's also communicating with Saturn, which is also your own sense of authority. That's your own inner CEO. You know, you don't have to have an external boss out there. 
trust yourself towards your excellent people you know to, to do things in a very secure manner because you don't just jump you're not just a happy-go-lucky that will run off a cliff you know uh, chasing the rainbow yeah so you have Saturn there to ground you on this uh, so that that's very compatible there with you now in the following week after you probably brainstorm something about this um, I am seeing that Venus will do the same thing with both Neptune and Saturn. Now, first there's communication about some kind of a concept or idea. Then comes Venus in talking money talks. Okay, how much is this going to cost? You know, uh, to, to launch the website or to launch the new business. Whatever it is you're going to do. But money is involved and how much is the JV? You know, if you're going to joint venture with somebody, how, how much is that split? So those things, very good there on the second week of June uh, to go ahead with that. Just make sure that whatever agreements that you're making is on the up and up and that you're satisfied with it. Because Mercury Pluto's there, you might be coming from this point of view, the other person might be coming from another point of view, and then Mars is square Neptune. So you don't want to be taken. That's the only warning here that I'm seeing. Neptune can kind of cloud things, meaning that yes, everything sounds so good and everything is so secure, uh, because it is, you know. This, this whole week here has been so good that you haven't really seen any flaws, but the little pitfall here could be, don't be taken advantage of. They might be seeing something you're not, okay? Watch that. And then we have the new moon on the 8th. Great time. It's also in your second house for, for income, personal income and values. And uh, it is here square with Uranus, which can give some flashes of insights, new ideas on this new moon. Uh, it will also probably give you a few indicators of what you don't want to do no more because Uranus can also separate from. So whatever separations happen on this day, is a good thing because the new moon is looking out for you that's new beginnings you know new starts for not just this month the entire year and uh, we're also looking at, you know at the new moon of last month which was an eclipse so that eclipse from last month is still coloring you now you're still riding the wave of that uh, eclipse and taking you into this one now in your second house of finances where like I said Jupiter is there you know, it's a once in a 12 year cycle that, that you have this with you. Powerful, powerful new moon for you, Taurus, to actually think about how you want your, your finances to look like for this year and in the future. Okay, split away from old thinking, old concepts. And I think this is what Mercury, which is communicating, uh, or communication, and the way we process our, our mind, um, Uranus is saying, way with that, you know, Get off that. We're, we're, we're reprogramming you. We're realigning you with new ways of thinking how you can benefit. So it's like trust it. And it, sometimes it's hard for Taurus to trust because it wants proof and evidence all the time. You are an earth sign and you are the bull. <laughs> right? So it might be needing to take a leap of faith for you. And you can do that. You can absolutely do that. Everything else right now is supporting you on it. 12th and 14th, we got Venus here, uh, also kind of, mm, what should I say, looking back over whatever idea you had that you wanted to split off from, from what no longer is working for you, and Venus is kind of wanting to reconsider, was that a good choice? You know, I, I see her doubting there a little bit. Did I do right? Was that right or was it wrong? Or if I didn't do it, should I do it now? So you still have a chance there on the 12th and 14th. And you know what? By going with that leap of faith, Taurus, what it's also going to do, Venus is right there trying to your Chiron, the wounded healer. So by taking this shift, by going in a new direction, you're leaving some old wounds behind. And it's not like just putting a Band-Aid on it because then you know the wound is still right under there. No. This is healing it so the wound is healed over. There's no band-aid, you know, there, there, there's nothing to pick off. So I, I like to see what I'm seeing here mid-June for you. Then we have a lot of action, North 17th, 
Mars, your drive. Uh, it's also men around you in your life. It's also your own inner uh, masculine drive and focus is wanting to explore something new that you haven't done before. So excitement there on the 17th, wherever you are, try to think up something new and fantastic. I, I, I think that could just be the very beginning of more to come later on. So the 19th and 20th, we do have uh, Sun and Jupiter. It's uh, the happy day of the year when um, the Sun, which is you, you know, your inner core, the I am essence, really fanning out with big and glorious Jupiter that brings all the abundance to us. So great day for you on the 19th. Same thing on the 20th because Mercury is also going to be conjunct Venus. So a little romance perhaps going on there, 17th to 20th. For those of you going away or meeting somebody cross country, wonderful, wonderful time for that. Then we have the sun leaving this sector of the financials, moving into communication. So whatever you're balancing out right now in June is what you're going to be communicating, taking action on, and networking with in July. Okay, so get all your ducks in a row right now. Make all your decisions. That's all you need to do. In fact, you don't really need to start too much, but you need to have it all written out, you know, on paper. So once the, the sun moves into the third house, you will be communicating a whole lot more, um, broadcasting it, getting it out, um, across the internet, cyberly, any kind of way social networks could help you vastly here. And especially because five days later on the 25th, Jupiter is going to fall right behind it, supporting the sun, supporting your steps. And Jupiter is going to be there for a whole year until summer of 2014. So you're venturing out in, in, in new areas. You're shutting the door for this last year. And I know it's been a test for some of you, Taurus, this last year, when, when Jupiter, which also could be the law, you know, coming in, looking into your finances. I mean, now you can just take a big sigh and relief and know that at least that, a lot of that is squared away. Now your focus is on how can you now build your vision? How can you bring it out there? How can you bring people in there? Um, and, and new people coming in. And I also see it in the way you communicate with people that could be quite, um, should I say, creative. Um, you're, you're at least a whole lot more communicative about these ideas that you're now going to be sharing. We have Mercury going retrograde, 26th uh, of June, and uh, so that's just a little heads up. We know that when Mercury goes retrograde, we don't sign commitments, agreements, contracts, anything of that nature. We don't buy new equipment or anything of, of big bucks because they tend to go haywire. You know, so uh, you just want to refrain from that from the 26th of June and give it three and a half weeks. If you can give it a month to like end of July, Nothing's better than that. But before I end up here, I do want to speak a little bit about this constellation that we're going to be getting in June. And I don't normally really go into all the, the nitpicking of constellations, but we're having beautiful kite. You know, the kites that we play with, the dragons that we have up there. Now, imagine the kite, okay? It's elongated at the bottom here like this. And on top here, we're going to have Sun and Jupiter. So that's expansion of who you are. And this is going to be in your, um, this is at the end of the month, yes. So for you, this will be in uh, your sign of Cancer. Um, right turning there because the Sun is following right behind it. The Jupiter had already passed in, but the Sun is joining there. It's on tip of the kite. It's supported by Saturn and Neptune in beautiful aspects there. Saturn gives you body to what you're dreaming here with Neptune. These are your hopes, dreams, wishes, you know, the ideal that you foresee and which you, which is the sun, and Jupiter really wants to expand. Don't limit yourself. Now is the time to dream big, okay? Because Saturn here is there saying, hey, you can do it. If you want this, you can do it. You know, there's nothing holding you back here. Saturn, which normally gives us a lot of the challenges, is here for you on your side saying, go for it, girl. 
<laughs> you know. And then at the bottom of the kite, right down here, we're having a full moon. And the full moon is going to be powering up Saturn and Neptune and Jupiter and the Sun. And this full moon is not just any full moon. It's a full moon in uh, Capricorn where Pluto is. So within that 24-hour cycle, when the moon turns full, it's going to be conjuncting Pluto, meaning transformation. So it's like you'll feel something of the old self shedding, okay? Because it's full moon. And as you're shedding this, here comes the transformative power of Pluto birthing you, the new self. You know, things that you've been working on here for months and months and months. And you can go back in the other uh, monthly forecast to kind of re-listen. Get a recap of where you've been. See, Check it out that it's worked for you. And then see what you're shedding. Because in this rebirthing that, that Pluto gives, that's the gift. The true gift of Pluto is always the new you. So that will be there around the 23rd, 24th. Um, pay attention to those days. Do know that magic is working within you. And uh, I know I'm excited about it. And I'd love to hear your feedback. When we get to that time, come back and write something. How it transformed you. Okay? So that's what we have for this month, Taurus. And it's always such a delight to read from you. Uh, read for you. And uh, hear from you. It's been a lot of nice emails and also a lot of readings, private readings that I've been receiving from you, and it's always such a delight and such an inspiration. So I'll see you next month, and do listen to your moon sign and your rising sign if you know it. So, bye for now.